Hey everybody, it's Kija here, and today we have another Paragon gameplay to look at. In this gameplay, we'll be looking at Murdoch. Murdoch is a energy damage carry that plays a lot like a physical damage carry, such as Twin Blast or Sparrow. Before this video begins, I'd like to thank Ethos for providing me with this footage that he captured at the Paragon community event. Alright, let's jump into the gameplay. We can see Murdoch has a typical build, one health potion, one mana potion. He has no ward or harvest security that would help him out. Kalari comes in with a gank for steel, but steel is kind of out of position, so I think Kalari is going to take more damage uh, than Murdoch for that gank. So Kalari is quite poor off in the beginning right now. Blue Steel is coming in to gank this Orange Steel. Perhaps they can get a kill on him because Orange Steel is quite low health. Blue Steel plays that perfectly, gets behind the Orange Steel, knocks him forward. And I think this is going to be an easy kill for blue team. We can hear Kalari coming in, but I don't think Kalari is much of a threat for the blue team right now since Kalari is already so low health. And if Kalari engaged there, there's a very high chance that Kalari would have gone down as well. Alright, and with that death, we can see Murdoch has a relatively easy path to start attacking this orange tower. Although the likelihood of a kill on the orange tower is quite low, it's always good to have that extra bit of damage early on on the tower. So the next time that they have an opportunity to attack the tower, the chance that the orange tower will fall is very likely. As we can see, the Murdoch is doing very little damage, and with death timer so low and then at this point in the game, the orange team is going to be back way before Murdoch can do any substantial damage to the tower. However, every little bit helps. Alright, we can see Muriel coming in and pushing back the blue wave so Murdoch can no longer attack the tower without putting himself in risk of being hit by the tower. We see Murdoch is still pushing the wave. Perhaps he thinks he can still get some more damage on the tower, but honestly he's just pushing the lane towards uh, towards Muriel and putting himself in quite a bad position. With the lane this far up, he's still at all attacking the wave even though they're not even under the tower anymore. Uh, at this far up, the Kalari can quite easily gank the Murdoch, and as we've seen before, Kalari really likes ganking mid lane. Yeah, once again, let's see if he can get any damage on this tower. He lays down a trap. Will he be able to get damage on the tower with his push? It doesn't look like it. So really that push is just helping Muriel out. It's making it so Muriel doesn't have to worry about harassment from the Murdoch, as well as Murdoch having to worry about ganks. Real quick note with that trap, I tend to prefer making lines of traps in places that you can retreat across or advance across. One thing I really like doing on Murdoch is in the very beginning of the game, you level up your E, which is your trap, rather than your Q, which is your shotgun blast. If you level up your shotgun blast, you don't have the opportunity to trap the lane beforehand. So, oh, here comes Kalari for a gank. Although Kalari is level 1, so I don't think this anything will come of this. Kalari quite unluckily jumps on Murdoch's trap. Perhaps if Murdoch moved up just a bit sooner, he would have been able to get a kill, but it's very unlikely seeing as Muriel was there to assist the Kalari. As I was saying before, if you level up your trap first as Murdoch, before the minions come into lane, you can create a line of traps that the enemies really can't cross. And if they do cross that tra those lines of trap, they get slowed. Oh, here comes... Kalari again. I think that was a horrible play by Kalari. Murdoch didn't really exploit it. If Murdoch had it instead, as soon as he saw Kalari pop up, kind of moved behind Kalari a bit and then pushed the the Kalari back with his barrier, that probably would have netted a kill on the Kalari. And with those two backing, we can see that the, the tower damage for four is going to help Murdoch take down this middle tower. I really disagree with the Kalari and the Muriel running away right there. I They had a lot of health. They didn't have much mana, but they did have a lot of health to defend this tower. And because they already knew the tower was low, and because the blue minion wave was quite large, as soon as they left, it basically guaranteed the tower death for the blue team. We see Sparrow coming in, but he, she's much too late to defend the tower. Perhaps she can somewhat punish Murdoch for being so far up, but it doesn't look like that is going to be the case because the blue steel is there to intimidate the orange team from a fight. Looks like the orange steel might start be trying to start something. We can hear the enemy Kalari approaching. This could be very bad for the blue team. 
Kalari is in, but is not doing much. The blue, the orange steel comes in, trying to gank them. It's a 4v1 at the moment, if the mural comes up. <clears throat> but neither the mural nor Sparrow came up quick enough to capitalize on that uh, initial engagement set up by the Kalari and the steel. However, we might see another engagement. Steel is getting pretty close. She charges up, but once again, the, or the rest of the orange team needs to sprint up to back up the steel. Steel alone does not have enough damage to take out any, either of the blue team members. And despite the relatively good engagement by Steel, I don't think uh, Blue Orange Team is going to have the advantage in this fight. We see Twin Blast coming in to help Murdoch. Murdoch pushes away the Orange Steel. I disagree with that maneuver. I think if Mur Murdoch did not push away, between the auto attack damage of Twin Blast and Murdoch, that Orange Steel probably would have died. Kalari is getting pretty low. Perhaps if Mur Murdoch ulted the Kalari right there, we could have seen a kill. Kalari has a relatively low health pool and ha had less than one bar of health left. With that end of the quarrel in mid lane, Murdoch decides to go back to base and buy a Whirling Wand. He upgrades it with two Kinetics and one Major Cast. Although there is some uh, use to that Whirling Wand, the attack speed is definitely super helpful. I typically build a Rift Maga Scepter and build all physical or uh, all energy damage casts into that. I feel like the w with the way Murdoch plays you can have a really good harass in lane with that build. Uh, by putting down that trap and entering and re-entering the smoke, Orange team heard the audio cue and know Murdoch is there so if they're playing with, or with audio right now, Orange team should know that Murdoch is there. That trap is pretty good though, it blocks off one escape path for Orange. However, Murdoch is really wasting a lot of time here. He really should be pushing this level advantage. He goes in. He wasted about 30 seconds before going in though, so that did hurt him. But with Steel surrounding the orange team, I believe this should be quite beneficial of a gank for the blue team. Murak goes in on the Muriel. Definitely doing a lot of damage. Muriel really doesn't have any escapes right now. Gideon is starting to uh, help out Murdoch. Uh, looks like Muriel's going down, except Murdoch Barrier pushed the Muriel away, allowing her to escape into the jungle and survive the gank. Sparrow is also there. Blue team can't really do anything against the Sparrow. Sparrow can easily defend this turret because of her Q. Kalari is out of position. They're going on Kalari. Let's see if they can get her and catch her out of position. Kalari is sprinting, so one hit should root her. Doesn't look like Murdoch's able to land a hit, though. Luckily for him, Gideon lands a hit, and they are able to take out the Kalari. Now, they could either push down left lane, although Sparrow is defending it, which will be hard to push against with Sparrow's wave clear. So instead, they opt to make their way towards right lane, see if they can make a play there. Grux and Murdoch are moving in. They see Steel and Muriel underneath the tower, and it seems like Murdoch is trying to find some type of alternate gank path. <coughs> However, both both Steel and Mural together underneath that tower are really two defensive players under a defensive situation. It's going to be very, very hard to get any form of kill against them. <laughs> Murdoch trying to find some way to engage this, but he's wasting a lot of time. In addition to the time he wasted before, he's really losing that level advantage he built up in the beginning. Not many good ideas being made here. I don't think he can do anything here. You could try and siege the tower with him, but he opts to instead go to mid lane, see if he can find a, a gank, and if he can't, just farm up and push that level advantage. However, we see Murdoch and Kalari, the orange teams, Murdoch and Kalari, pretty far pushed up. Blue Steel has a great engage on them, allowing Murdoch to essentially take out all of Kalari's health bar if he can land this final shot, and he does. And there he is on Murdoch. Murdoch was trying to kill the blue steel, but I think blue Murdoch is going to kill the orange orange uh, Murdoch before he can damage the steel. And we can see blue Murdoch misses that ultimate, and because of that I believe the orange Murdoch will be able to get away. The blue Murdoch definitely made a mistake there with his knockback. He knocked uh, the orange Murdoch quite far away, allowing him to survive. As we can see again, Blue Murdoch is spending quite a lot of time looking for the orange Murdoch, and when you spend this much amount of time doing these tasks that don't really help improve the character at all, whether it be XP or CXP, you start losing that level advantage you built up. He engage on, engages on Kalari, but it's really hard to 
pick out Kalari because of that stealth, and as we see, Kalari is nowhere to be found. But he is able to push this lane with steel behind him to defend him in case of any ganks. Alright, he's going on the Sparrow. Sparrow is trying to defend with her Q, trying to make sure they can't push down this tower, but it seems like they are going to have some amount of push. With this, they can do some damage. Murak can do some damage on this middle tower. Seems like... Oh, there we go. The Q comes in, but much too late. Some damage of the tower has been done. Murdoch definitely didn't start attacking the tower soon enough, so it wasn't too big of a deal. This is kind of a risky position for Murdoch to be in, because if anyone comes in from the left or right side, he's pretty out of place from his team, and he has no teammates to back him up. However, we can see most of the orange team on the map, so it's not that risky, but it is definitely a little dangerous to be in this position. I definitely would trap the left and right side to fend off any ganks. And it's not like he's going to be able to push this middle tower. Sparrow definitely has a lot better wave clear than Murdoch, as we can see, her reign of arrows are actually tearing up the blue minions. Muriel comes in on Sparrow, perhaps giving Sparrow the confidence she needs to move in on Murdoch, and we see that she is moving in on Murdoch. However, Muriel does miss the boost on onto Sparrow, so Sparrow did not have the move speed required to catch up to Murdoch and net the kill. Muriel really needed to either land that boost onto Sparrow or sprint up and slow down the Murdoch in order to make that kill work. Murdoch goes back to base after that and buys an Agorn Scepter and sockets it with three major casts. I disagree with this purchase. I think the Agorn Scepter is quite useless at the moment because he has no crit, and the Agorn Scepter max bonus is 50% crit damage. But if you have no crit damage, that 50% doesn't really matter. However, I do like the addition of three major cast slots. I feel like pure damage is a good thing to build for him at the moment. Alright, he is in mid lane farming, but sees this opportunity to gank right lane. He's moving on to the blue buff, doing some damage to it, and with this blue buff, he's going to be able to attack a lot faster, and with a slow attack speed carry like Murdoch, it really helps to get that extra attack speed from blue buff. We can see the blue steel engaging on the orange steel and orange sparrow, and with this, we can uh, Twin Blast is able to use his barrage, and his Twin Blast barrage and... Murdoch's auto attacks are way more than enough damage to take them both out. With those two dead, top right tower is relatively dead as well, seeing as it's already quite low health. We uh, don't have any vision on Mural or Kalari, so I am expecting a counterattack from them quite soon. We see Mural coming in. Quite out of position, though. She's opening herself to be attacked by the Murdoch. She does get the kill on the low health Twin Blast. However, I don't think she really benefits from that kill much at all because she was not able to pick up the CX speed orbs that dropped from the Twin Blast. However, Murdoch is able to pick up her CX speed or orbs that dropped. However, Mural did get a death timer on that Twin Blast, which certainly buys some time for her team. We can see them trying to move up, the orange team trying to move up on Murdoch, but he runs away sooner, so they cannot make any moves against him. Deciding to move over to mid lane, he sees what she can find. He sees a sparrow trying to gank left lane. He thinks he's going after that sparrow. Although he gets trapped by the by the turret, he moves a little bit too much in range of that turret. He sees Murdoch mid lane, but decides to help his team in left lane, which I think is the better decision. He's in the stealth. He throws down the trap, cutting off their backwards escape route. <coughs> now... He's able to quite easily uh, kill this Sparrow because of his much better positioning, and also Mural didn't quite uh, catch on to Murdoch soon enough to assist the Sparrow. Mural, however, does realize Sparrow goes down, and she starts running away from the Murdoch. However, she makes a fatal error by getting caught up on that rock, and I think that'll slow her down enough to get caught. Another fatal error by stopping in the shadow screen, even though she knew that Murdoch was chasing her. And from that error, she's going down. Murdoch sees red buff. I think the best plan of action is to get that red buff and then regroup with the team in mid to help out at that team fight, but he opts to instead go around back in the jungle. He sees a team fight in mid. He's trying to go over to help them. Although he stops here for two seconds, and two seconds, although it seems like a small amount of time, it can be a crucial amount of time in team fights like this. 
However, because blue team is so far ahead, they really didn't need that extra two seconds, so they were relatively okay, as Gideon's black hole really cleans up that team fight quite nicely. And here they all, all are pushing mid. Sparrow does have quite good wave clear. She might be able to fend off this tower a little bit. Murdoch catches himself. He doesn't realize the tower range goes onto those stairs and dies because of his sprinting into tower range and getting rooted. Let's see what he buys after that death. Now, without a Goran Scepter, he really should be thinking about purchasing crit to make sure that actually matters. He buys a Red Eye Nitro and sockets it with crit. Definitely a good decision. That crit is going to help him do a lot more damage. Now, he still has seven more card points. He can buy another item. He opts to buy the Rift Mag Scepter and socks it with a major cast. I disagree with that socket. I think two regular casts would have been a better idea. <coughs> or, sorry, two regular wounds. That way he can build crit and have a better uh, usage of his card points. More efficient usage of his card points, that is. He was pushing left lane, but realized a team fight in mid lane is breaking out. He sees if he can clean up a kill on the steel, and he gets it. With that death, as well as the death of a couple other members of Orange Team, Blue Team can easily push down this middle turret. They can even begin pushing onto the middle inhibitor. However, Sparrow comes up, and with Sparrow there, she is going to be able to clear a lot of minions with her Reign of Arrows. So Blue Team is not going to have an easy time pushing down this tower. However, Sparrow misses her Reign of Arrows. Perhaps they can make a push to make uh, at least a little damage on that tower, but luckily for Sparrow, they didn't capitalize on that miss, and they got out of there. Let's see what Murdoch decides to do. I think Murdoch sees the Kalari in the left lane slightly out of position, trying to go over to see if he can get a quick kill on the Kalari. Sees red buff again. I really recommend getting that red buff. It really helps your damage and also gives you a lot of experience and card points. However, he just quickly goes to the Kalari. The problem about ganking Kalari like this is with Kalari's stealth, it's really hard to get a kill. You can just enter stealth and then you don't really know where he is, and unless you can kill him really, really fast, He's most likely going to get away. However, we see blue team grouping up in left lane. They are able to make a push here. They are most likely going to be able to get that top left turret with the uh, other side being harassed by the blue steel. It's a nice split push going on. However, Murdoch branches away from the team and decides to get that black buff. That black buff is definitely going to help him out a lot at this point in the game. At this point in the game, blue is really... Our blue team is really trying to siege the structures, and with that black buff, Murdoch's going to be able to do a lot more damage to the structures. Initially, he goes after Kalari, but decides against it. I think he realizes that Kalari is just so weak at this point in the game, it would be a better idea to possibly gank and pay more attention to those two orange team members in the right lane. However, while he was running by, he noticed Steel doing Orb Prime. Perhaps that is the best play, and he does decide that is the best play for the team. With that Orb Prime, they are going to have a lot of pushing power because Murdoch already has the black buff and everybody will, everybody will be able to do massive amounts of damage. They take down the Orb Prime. Now, they want this Orb on the Steel, so Murdoch needs to back to drop the Orb. And he does, and drops the Orb to the t his tankier teammate. Now that Steel has the Orb, he's going to have a lot higher chance of actually dropping it off without dying because he's that much more tanky. Typically you want your orb on a very mobile person that can get away easily such as Kalari or a really tanky person such as Steel or Rampage to make that drop off. Squishy people like Murdoch can easily get countered. We can see Blue Team making a push around the top left orb drop off. That'll help Steel get it in. Although seems like Orange Team could have probably stopped Steel there, but they missed their attacks. And with all their focus on Steel, Murdoch is able to completely just kill most of the blue team. And now we can see Steel got the uh, OP buff on his team, which is really going to help him out. As you can see, Twin Blast was able to two-shot that Sparrow with the OP buff. 
and with this it's a pretty easy path to the core. They have so much siege damage and Steel just ultimated that Murdoch, killing the rest of the orange team. Or Murdoch definitely needed to not stay there and move to the core to try and make as much of a final attempt as he could. However, it's not really looking good for orange team no matter what they do. They have the OP buff on blue team and Murdoch has that black buff so he's going to be doing a crazy amount of damage to this core. As we can see, despite Orange Steel's ultimate, he's able to basically bring the core down to zero and his team helps finish it off. Alright, thank you guys. This is Kija. Hope you enjoyed watching it. I recommend checking out Ethos' channel out. He provided this gameplay. His channel will be in the description.